share our stories with one another, to share our joys, to share our concerns, and to continue this journey of faith together. You have been called here. You have answered the call that you felt this morning to come and gather in this space together. This is our time. This is our place. This is our space of worship. We belong here. And as we gather to share in this time of worship, let us pause to remember that we worship on land so that our bylaw, the unseen land of Nicomagi, the ancestral territory of the Nicomagi people, may we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. Our announcements have been sent out. And they, you have them in front of you, you have them online, they're in all the different ways. Uh, let's have a look this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We have our church council meeting. So church council is meeting this afternoon downstairs in the parlor at 2. On um, Wednesday, so focus on the parlor Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday night is our dessert option. Uh, and you'll see that there's an announcement about that. But this week, the auction dessert evening has arrived. Thank you to everyone who's agreed to bring a dessert. The desserts can be dropped off on Wednesday between 1 and 3.30 or quarter to 6 to 6.15. During the same time, you can drop off your baked items for the auction. So if you've signed up to do a baked item, you can do it then. If you uh, are thinking of donating a baked item, please let Wendy know today because the auction groups are being made up tonight. So she needs to know. And if you were bringing in a last minute item, bring it in today. Today's it. Countdown is done. Um, the auction is a major fundraiser for our church, and you can support the event by attending and possibly inviting a friend to come along who would be interested in a fun evening. That's a lot of pressure. I didn't know it said fun evening. <laughs> but I might say something weird. So, you know, there's that. That could be interesting at least. Uh, admission is $5 and you can be paid at the door if you haven't purchased your tickets yet. Um, then we're looking ahead. June 5th, we have our community luncheon and our junior choir practice. June 9th is our anniversary Sunday. And on anniversary Sunday, we will celebrate all couples in our congregation who have been married for 50 years or more. If you know someone who is not included last year, please let us know. On June 10th, we have our Celtic Soul Concert uh, being held at 7 p.m. featuring Heather's Kitchen. So Stephanie Freeman, Robin McGinnis, John Muirhead, and Brad Priest all are welcome by in admission and by donation. And then after that, we have our graduation service and Sunday school closing. And do you know someone associated with our church family who is graduating from high school this year? If so, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can include them in our celebration on the 16th. We will also be including the names of post-secondary graduates in our bulletin. So if you have somebody who falls into this category, who is graduating from a post-secondary institution this year, we would love to hear from you so we can honor them on that day. This bulletin has been given in, given in loving memory of Chuck Roddick by Lake Marnie, and a donation has been made to the dessert auction evening in memory of Lynn Blanford, Deck. And a donation has been made to the audiovisual equipment in loving memory of Chuck Roddick by Nancy and Joe Doyle and family. I don't see any birthdays in front of you. Are there any birthdays or other announcements for us to remember at this time? Oh, why is that?
source of all life. We gather in your presence, grateful for the love and the wisdom that sustains us. Help us to grow deep roots in your teachings, grounding us in compassion and understanding. Amen. Our mission and service minute is being brought to you today by Marshall. Spirit of truth, we confess that we have not always lived as you have called us to live. Forgive us for our shortcomings and guide us back to the path of love and humility. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Uh, hear these words of grace. We are forgiven and renewed by boundless love that embraces us all. And we respond by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Father Adorio and Stephanie has directions for us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're going to start <coughs> singing together today. I don't know, I'm scared. But just, you know, I, I just want to say 
is going to sing with Alessandra. Um, you'll start following it when I ignore you while they're singing the second line. And then this side, with me, are going to start the third. So you just keep going throughout the three verses. And when we get to the end, the choir will be done and we'll still be singing. Then the house group will be done and then we'll be here singing the last song. It worked really well in practice. The choir. So we'll give it a try. Alright, so choir, you're on. Uh, Well, I 
get too wet and then you've gotten knocked over. So roots are very important. They help us grow, they help us have stability. So there is an analogy that a lot of people use that they compare our homes and our families and our communities and our, our faith to roots. Remember last week, um, Victoria was saying rooted in joy was the theme at the, at the regional meeting. And then the theme for the grown-ups was rooted in faith. So there's a whole bunch of this talk about being rooted. So what do you think we get from being from our communities and from our faith tradition and our families? What would the, the similarity that people would say? Like your roots and the roots of, of the plant. What do you think the ties are? So when we're rooted with our families or rooted with our faith or rooted in our community, they offer us the things we need to live and grow, right? They offer us stability that help us stand tall in the world. There's lots of similarities between um, families and communities and the roots of a plant. And that's why we make those ties and our faith, right? That that our faith offers us a grounding, a place to grow from and to learn from. So it's like roots. What happens though if a plant doesn't have very good roots? Well, you already told us, right? So see what happens if a plant doesn't have very good roots?
for our families, for our faith, and for our roots. Help us to help others by sharing the love and the faith that we have together. Amen. from the Gospel of John today. Um, it's the scripture that was picked for this Sunday by the lectionary because this Sunday is Trinity Sunday. It's the Sunday where you're going to notice through the music that we are celebrating all of the different elements of the Trinity and that we are celebrating the different ways in which God uh, is represented to us and, and different ways in which we can connect to God through those different Representations. So this scripture from the Gospel of John uh, represents to us all the different ways in which we can um, connect to, uh, find connection with God. And it's a conversation between someone called Nicodemus and Jesus. And it happens late at night. There's a really important symbolism behind that that I could go on about, but I don't. Uh, and Jesus talks about life in the spirit. So you're going to hear Jesus talk about creator God and son of God and life in the spirit, which are the three elements of the Trinity, right? And he's going to equate everlasting life, but we would know this as love, right? When we hear him talk about everlasting life, we're going to be hearing about this everlasting life rooted in faith and connected with the spirit. And we're going to hear right at the end. Uh, so it talks about the kingdom of God. And we've talked about the kingdom of God before. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is something that we're striving for here all the time among us. That this is something that's present and real and here in this time. So listen for that. And also listen for the end. How um, he says that it's rescuing the world headed toward destruction. This life in the spirit will rescue the word world headed toward destruction. And when I was reading that, I was thinking, when we are rooted in community, when we're rooted in our faith, when we have the support, um, we are headed toward compassion and love and not toward destruction. So, have a listen to this encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees, a man with some clout among his people. He came to Jesus under the cloak of darkness to question him. And Nicodemus said, Teacher, some of us have been talking, and you are obviously a teacher who has come from God. The signs you are doing are proof that God is with you. And Jesus responded by saying, Tell you the truth. Only someone who experiences birth for a second time can hope to see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, I'm a grown man. How can I, someone, be born again when they are old like me? Am I to crawl back into my mother's womb for a second birth? That's impossible. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. If someone does not experience water and spirit both, there is no chance they will make it to the kingdom of God. Life from life. Whatever is born from flesh is flesh. Whatever is born from the Spirit is spirit. Don't be shocked by my words. Because I tell you the truth, even you, an educated and respected person among your people, must be reborn by the Spirit to enter to the 
this kingdom of God. The wind blows around us as if it has a will of its own, but we feel it and hear it. But we do not understand where it has come from or where it will end up. Life in the spirit is as if it were the wind of God. Nicodemus said, I still don't understand how this can be. And Jesus said, your responsibility is to instruct Israel in matters of faith, but you don't comprehend the necessity of a life in the Spirit. I tell you the truth. We speak about things we know, we give evidence about the things we have seen, and you choose to reject the truth of our witness. If you do not believe what I talk to you about, when I talk to you about ordinary, earthly realities, then heavenly realities will certainly elude you. No one has ever journeyed to heaven above except for the one who has come down from heaven, who is of heaven. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up. Then all those who believe in the Son of Man will experience everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. Here's the point. God didn't send his son into the world to judge it. Instead, the son is here to rescue the world, headed toward certain destruction. This is our gospel according to John. Thanks be to God. And as we hear all the different expressions of God, we know that throughout scripture, God is often represented as a female, as a mother, loving her children. So we have our next hymn, which is Mother and God. Speak with 
us. Um, she is a dedicated advocate for youth and community support, and uh, we are very pleased to have her come and speak with us today. Welcome.
definitely are rules and regulations. Um, you know, the kids have a curfew, they can't bring any paraphernalia or anything like that in. Um, but we don't push them too hard. We also, it's a volunteer program. So if we intake a youth and they get all set up and five minutes later they say, nah, this isn't for me, that's okay. Be safe, make your choices. We're here um, when you come back, if you come back, if you ever need to come back. Um, so currently, right now, the stay is kind of fluid. So three months is their initial intake. What we, what I found when I first took over was it was just three months, and we couldn't build a rapport with the kids that we needed in order to start helping them make the changes that they so desperately needed. If I met one of you, I'm not going to tell you my life story and everything that's bothering me in the first five minutes, right? We know that about ourselves as, as you know, everyday people. Um, and so moving that stay, if a youth is bettering themselves or trying to better themselves in some way, going to school, getting a job, working on their mental health, um, consistently taking up a hobby, going to the gym, and that kind of stuff, then that stay is fluid, right? So inherently, we could have a kid from age 16 to 24. That isn't the goal, or not a good one. But the harsh reality of the housing situation in Victor County and everywhere, there isn't anywhere for them to live. The, the, you know, the rent prices are exorbitant. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of where that transitional housing project came in. Um, so those kids do work, they do go to school, um, they're working on specialized program, you know, how to cook, how to keep the house clean, how to, to make them um, even more productive members of society. And so it's kind of funny, we got a, an email um, from somebody in the, in the town itself, and it was, you know, kind of, what's with this homeless shelter that's on Poplar Street? So Poplar Street, if you know Sullivan, is the main road kind of into the most, quote unquote, affluent area of Sullivan. So I can understand why people are like, oh, what is this? What, what's in my backyard? Because everybody wants to help, but nobody wants it beside the house. I get it. Totally get it. It's the same thing, you know, with the new shelter in Sullivan. Um, and I said, this is where knowledge is power, right? People are afraid of what they don't understand. So one of my biggest things is speaking to, to congregations or populations like this. When you hear things about Foods for Youth, if you know it to be different, or, you know, why don't you give Kevin a call, have a chat with her. I would sit down with anybody to say, you know, this is who we are, this is what we do. You could move to the best neighborhood in the world and your neighbors could be not the greatest. So, you know, it's kind of all relative. The thing, you know, with us, we have cameras, we have this, we have, we're staffed 24 hours a day. So, you know, our kids, <laughs> they're not getting away with anything. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things that I really want to portray, like we work really hard helping them become functioning members um, of society. But that transitional housing program is absolutely not a homeless shelter. The kids stay there to be there. Um, they work really hard to be there. And so um, it's definitely getting out that message of, yes, the, the new shelter on Stella Street, which is actually just down from the Sharon St. John Church, um, that, that is a homeless shelter. But the one on, on Poplar Street is your second stage transitional housing. So they are, uh, but they're very different and also a little bit the same. Um, and so, you know, when we come and I, I do these, these conversations, I have to let you know how grateful we are as an organization for the things that congregations like yourselves do to help the kids. So prime example is the pajamas. Um, we are able to create Christmases for these kids that like we bought in the Christmas tree last year with lots of kids. They never had a Christmas tree in their life. And if they did, it wasn't a nice one. Um, we had brand new ornaments, we had, you know, all the things. And for them to be able to go in and come out on Christmas morning and have presents under the tree with their names on them and, and things, you know, that were specific to them. So we go out, we know our kids, we go out, we, we get them presents, we do the same thing for our outreach chief. Um, and the stability and the love that that creates you, you can't buy that. It is um, absolutely amazing. And so, you know, we do things like that. We put on a full-blown Christmas dinner. 
actually now he lives in the transitional housing project. Um, he came in and he said, oh, is that Grady? I said, yeah, sure it's Grady. Uh, from the packet? I said, yeah, it's Grady's not from the packet. What are you? So anyway, take off. Oh, this Grady's lit. <laughs> and but he never could fit fit eight floor plates. And he liked even now, because I can make good Grady. Show them love and compassion through food. It's 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 an absolutely amazing thing, and you build rapport with these kids through the things that we're able to do. We we purposely. I mean, there's some times that we have to put them in their place. Don't get me wrong, but there's a level of whatever that we take because we know that if we do that and we remain calm and we listen to them, then we're going to get there. And we're going to start to be able to make change um, and to kind of help them to where they need to go. It's, it's a tough gig. There's no housing. Mental health is, is not a lot. We do our best in Prince County, and it's even less for youth. Um, so any youth who, if we have somebody that you know we deem really is in a mental health crisis and is above our capabilities, the next step for them is the other UK. And a lot of times, moving kids out of a smaller community and sending them to the city is a huge barrier in itself. There's only three uh, youth shelters in Nova Scotia. There's ourselves, there's Phoenix and Halifax, and there's Shift and Yarm. And so that's a very broad um, area. And we only, I think Phoenix has 10 beds, we have eight, and Shift has six. And so um, we fill up really quickly. They do, we do have Haven and Toronto. Um, Haven is a bit of a different piece because they provide a safe warm bed at the minimal amount. So it could be a 16 year old kid in the same room as a 50 year old person. And so we definitely try to kind of help each other out. Um, but that is a safe bed in the purest, a warm bed in the purest form. Um, so it, it, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of, of, of time and compassion. And we definitely couldn't do it without um, the community, and so we're super grateful for that. Um, we also have a full blown outreach program, which is youth uh, ages 12. We actually now we've moved it up to 26. Um, and so 12 to 15, we it's mostly kids who are in the care of BTS or have been deemed to be in the care of BTS um, for our community services. And now with us in LHB, we go up to 26. It's good because we have a little bit of overlap with Wild Oak Place. And so we can kind of work to, you know, we talk about our different organizations in our community. So we have Big Brother, Big Sister, or we have Kids First. Usually they start with family, whatever. Then we move into Big Brother, Big Sisters. Then we kind of step in. And then, you know, the hope and the prayer is that, you know, kids don't end up needing us or they don't end up needing Wild Oak Place. The harsh reality is. Is that a lot of people do, um, and it, it doesn't seem to be to be getting any better. And so it's it's really I'm really happy to be able to work with Viola's now, so that we can kind of make up a plan, a case management plan, or whatever, if you will, to for those next steps. Um, so when we do outreach, we meet the kids wherever they're at. Um, I did a presentation at the 50 United Church, and I had no idea that they have that beautiful little gazebo kind of garden. On the side, and they have a lot of youth that come and use that. They plug their phones in, whatever, and so it's given them a really great opportunity to come and meet the youth that they don't come to the congregation, but they come outside. And it reminded me, I don't know if anybody's ever seen Sister Act or Sister Act 2, it just kind of reminded me of in the first Sister Act when they're in Reno in this big church and they open the doors and they play, you know, Boogie Woogie on the piano, and all these kids come in as they hear the school music. It was really heartwarming um, to see. And I know there's um, outreach through this, this church as well, and it's really important. Um, it's about love, and it's about compassion, and that's what brings kids in. Um, one, one thing I would love to ask is, we do community outreach, we do rural outreach. If you live in a rural community, and you know where youth hang out, or you know, you know, um, give me a call, give me a call, in, in this smaller community, you know, River John, Scott, Burn, um, we don't
So unless somebody tells us, and especially if they're not in school, because the goal of our outreach program is the kids that aren't in school. Um, schools Plus does a really good job while they're in school, and then we kind of step in and make those kids find themselves um, to not be in school. Obviously the goal is to get them back into school as, as quickly as possible, but you know yourself, sometimes school's not where they're at right now, and we have to address why is that, right? Where's the addiction, where's the trauma, where's all kind of, of those things? Um, and I think even with housing, that's a really important point to make. We have to talk about now this housing first model. We have to do it really has, absolutely, yes we do. But if we don't address the trauma and the addiction, if you have a gentleman who's lived in a tent for 25 years and you take him out and put him in a house, but haven't addressed all the issues of what possibly has created the homelessness in the first place, then we're not really any better off than we were in the beginning. Um, so that's really what we're trying to do um, when we get some of these kids at 16. They're pretty rough, but you still see enough hope in them that we can we can definitely work with them and, and help to kind of guide them and, and get them past where they're at right now. Um, so yeah, I've done this in a couple of other congregations. I don't know how much time is left, but I've asked, does anybody have any questions for me? Is there anything that you might like to know that I can answer? Any myths? Any, just ask me. Does it have to be? Um, the other thing I want to say is that our outreach program and our drop-in program is for every youth in Pictou County. You do not have to be associated with groups. Um, we don't talk about things like contraceptives and that kind of stuff. You can be the president of the student council and your mom's a teacher at the school and your dad's a manager at Sobeys and you don't want to go and buy whatever it is that you need. So what the kids do, I know, I, I was a teenager, they steal them. And we don't want them to steal them. Um, and so we can, you know, knock on the door. I have three teenagers of my own that go, they go to school with my kids. So it's, uh, yeah, anybody have any questions either now or Seasonal 
wrap-ups 